few, the directors of Daybreakers, Peter and Michael Spirit. Headings in uh, horror film history. Sam Neill! Uh, you know, we were. We, we started the idea long before there was this kind of vampire thing that's been going on. And. and uh, we just wanted to do something that, uh, uh, we had this idea for a world that was populated by vampires, that's just the basic idea, and then we um, tried to figure out who the characters were, and, and um, it just took a long time, we spent a lot of time researching things, uh, a lot of time, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, things that may not be evident, but you kind of do it to get an understanding of, of a world, and, and we spent so much time trying to figure out what the world was and, and how it worked and, and to do that you just need to spend a lot of time. We wrote so much that isn't in the movie and, and we've got so much material uh, for a sequel. <laughs> um, yeah, do you want to add anything? You got anything intelligent to add? Um, I think it took so long because um, we're just very slow writers. <laughs> It, it took a long, I mean, this is still an independent film, and, and independent films take a very long time to sort of get financing and, and, and so on. Um, we certainly weren't sitting around for five years waiting for something to happen. Um, yeah, and, and also, too, uh, this is kind of, Undead was made for nothing, and this was made for a lot more than that. So, um, and, and it took a long time to sort of get the money together and convince people that we could do it. I just, I'll give you a comparison for, you know, what Undead cost, you know, the budget was ultimately a million dollars, but it actually cost a hundred thousand dollars to make, and then people worked on deferrals, which is, you know, they, they basically sign a contract that says if the movie makes money, you will get paid this amount. But anyway, it was a hundred thousand uh, dollars. The contact lens budget on Daybreak is, is more than that. <laughs> So it's a very different kind of movie, and we have to convince people, you know, that Michael and I kind of know what the hell we're doing. Well, <coughs> a couple of observations. I'm listening. <laughs> About the spirits, you know, um, it's been my experience with people that I've worked with or have met, people like people who can create and sustain a dystopic world like the Spirit Brothers, people like David Cronenberg or George Miller or John Carpenter, these sort of people, usually are the nicest, sweetest, <laughs> kindest people you could meet. At least that's the way they seem. <laughs> It's a thin veneer. <laughs> These boys would suck the blood right out of you. They'd, they'd suck the marrow out of your bones if you gave them a chance. <laughs> the other thing, of course, that I wanted to say was, for those of us who have to take a little pill every day, or those of us who will, you will know that it's never about the cure. <laughs> We've got two of them here right now. Can we bring them up? Steve Boyle and Samantha Little from Weather Workshop. Come on up. Steve since, uh, since we were at uh, college. Uh, we've made short films together, uh, we made Undead together, and um, Steve's sort of been our, our, our filmmaking partner for, for well over a decade now. So Steve has always been a big contributor, and whenever I have ideas for films, Steve's usually the first person I, I contact when, I, when we want to sort of develop creatures and that sort of stuff. 
Um, as far as the CGI goes, we ran out of money, so Peter and I had to do a lot of effects again. <laughs> oh, I'll stop beating down on my chest. Um, just the time, the amount of time we had, it was just it was crazy. We had, um, I don't know, maybe, I uh, first heard about the idea in 2003. Actually, I think it might have been when you guys came back from Toronto with Uncle Dan. He said, uh, hey, we've got this idea about the world being taken over by vampires. And, um, yeah, just finished. <laughs> so, I mean, we had, we, had, we, had, we had all the time in the world to think about it, but to actually build the stuff, it was, uh, we didn't have a lot of time. So, uh, and there's so much prosthetic makeup in this. I mean, the, the, the guy in the kitchen, the subsider in the kitchen, that application was about 10 hours just to do his appliances. Um, we had actually, we had uh, like a 10 hour day to get everything ready. 10 hour application starting at about midnight. And uh, or one o'clock in the morning, and um, then he had to get ready. Uh, then he was on set, and we were on set for about twelve hours with him. Actually, I kind of um, bailed and fell asleep, and Sam stayed that whole time. And uh, so, uh, but I mean, is that accurate? <laughs> well, one of the things that we learned from Undead is it's a it's a mistake to be involved in everything. It just is because you spread yourself so thin. And what we really wanted to do was surround ourselves with people that are so much better than we are. And that's kind of what we got on Daybreakers. And uh, no, we don't want to do everything. We really don't. I don't want to do visual effects. <laughs> it just kind of worked out that way. Um, I think the best thing a director can do is direct. You know, to be on set directing and not worry about producing or all the other aspects. Because directing is so damn hard to do. Um, and then so is producing, and then so is all the other things. And, and I, I don't have any interest in editing my own movies again. I don't want to do it. I think it's great to have an editor come in with a fresh pair of eyes and cut something for you, and, and you, know, you can look at it and be objective. Um, so while our hands are all over this, it's, it's, not, it's not what we would like. We would like to be a little bit more um, uh, focused on, on one particular job. I, I was expecting a lot on the floor that the arguments between the two, that they spookily agree on everything. On everything. Really? <laughs> There's a kind of silence in the, in the tent that we go into and we scream at each other and then we come out. And we're actually part actors too, it's all the performance. <laughs> So, but on, on set, what, how do you divide the duties? Well, you know, it, it, we, we, we talk so much about things before we ever get on set, and maybe that's a product of low budget, you know, because you, when you get on set, the time on set is so precious, you can't screw around, you just have to get it done. So Michael and I work out everything in advance so that we don't have any arguments on set. So then it's about executing the ideas. Uh, yes, it was. <laughs> I mean, Why? Yeah, yes, it was um, because we had a, a certain budget, and if you make a film like this with the budget that we had in Australia, your audience is incredibly limited. Um, so you want to appeal to a worldwide audience, and the way you do that is you make people sound like they're Americans. <laughs> it's just it's just the way it is. Um, Australians don't want to go see Australian films. <laughs> it's, does that sound familiar at all?